Hello and welcome to Divi Coaching. Today we're going to be building this menu complete with the call to action button on the right hand side and when you scroll this menu it sticks to the top of the screen and everything shrinks down slightly. So the site here is one of the Divi templates and they come really without menus as standard and I thought I would build this one just to show you how easy it is. So let's get on with building this menu. I've created a new site and I've added some pages. So I've got home, about, blog, contact and services. I haven't done anything about the menu. So at the moment it's still showing the uh, original Divi menu that you get with WordPress. And when you scroll, it shrinks. Um, but other than that, this is basically not using a theme builder menu. It's using the basic WordPress menu. So the first thing we're going to do is come into the uh, dashboard. We're going to come down to menus and we're going to create a new menu and we're going to call this main menu and we're going to click to create. We want to add all of the pages and we want to set the menu position to primary. So I'm going to click primary here. I'm going to click view all and I'm going to select all of the pages and I'm going to click on add to menu. Now I'm going to check the order. Now I in fact want about to be after home and then we're going to go with contact, then blog and then services. Now, in order to make my call to action button, which I want to call breakdown help, I'm going to create another item at the end of the menu, which is not going to be linked to a page. So to do that, I'm going to go to custom links and I'm not quite sure where it's going to go yet. So it would really depend on what you wanted to do with it. It could be uh, dialing a phone number. It could be uh, emailing someone. It could be going to a different part of the site. But as a placeholder, I'm just going to put a hash in here now. And I can then fill in some link text and that is going to be breakdown help. And once I've done that, I can say add to menu and it adds the item at the bottom and it gives it a category of custom link. Now, if I open that up, what I want to be able to do in order to style it into a button is I need to be able to uh, target it and add some custom CSS. And to do that, I would like to give just this item, not the whole menu, but just this item a class. And to do that, um, there's nowhere here obviously to do that. So I need to scroll up to the top and you'll see on the right hand side here, this little uh, menu saying screen options. And if you click on that, you'll find there are some different elements that can either be shown or hidden depending on how you want to work. And the one we're looking for is CSS classes. So if I enable this CSS classes, and uh, close this little menu again and come down. You can see that I now have uh, another field underneath my breakdown help menu item, which is called CSS classes. And I can now give this a class of DC CTA, uh, Divi Coaching Call to Action. And once I've done that, I can click to save my menu. Okay, so now when I go back to visit site, uh, we've fixed a couple of things. So we've got a menu up here, but it's still the WordPress menu. It's not a theme builder menu. And of course, we don't have any highlighting on our breakdown help item. So the next thing we need to do is to go in and create our header in the theme builder. So let's do that. So we go to dashboard, we come down to Divi and we go to theme builder. What we want is a new global header and we're going to build that global header from scratch. Once we get into the header, we can add a row, one single uh, column in that row, and the module that we're going to add is actually a menu module. And once that comes up, you can see we have our menu with all the links on the left hand side. Next thing we want to do is add a logo. And I haven't gone to the bother of actually creating a logo for this. I'm just going to use one of the existing site icons that were imported when I created the pages. So I'm going to click on here and what are we going to use? Let's go with this one here. So I'm going to choose that icon. I'm going to use that as my logo and I'm going to click upload image. So now I've got my uh, logo and I've got my menu text. We just now need to format it. So the first thing we're going to do is come into menu text and the font I want to use is a font that's already being used in the rest of the template and that is called Bebas New. So I'm going to make that my font. I'm then going to uh, move the menu items over to the right hand side. So to do that, if we scroll down, we will see a text alignment field. And if we click on uh, align right, we can now see that it's all gone over to the right. Next thing we need to do is make it a little bit bigger because it's quite difficult to read. I'm going to come in here to menu text size. 
I'm going to click on a responsive option in case I want to set a different size for the different breakpoints. And I'm going to increase the size uh, for the desktop up to, I don't know, let's say 20 pixels. Uh, that looks good. Looks a little bit cramped. So I'm also going to add a little bit um, of letter spacing. Let's go with maybe three pixels of letter spacing. And let's see how that looks at the responsive sizes. So I'm going to click on the tablet, click on the menu. That actually looks fine. And I'm going to do the same for the phone. And again, that looks fine. So I'm going to leave those sizes for the responsive sizes as well. So let's go back to the desktop size. Next thing we need to sort out is this spacing, because at the moment there is way too much spacing above and below um, the menu. And most of that is the padding in the section. So there's two ways to do that. You can either go into the settings icon, design and spacing and put some numbers in here. Or the other way, because it's a drag and drop builder, we can uh, hover over it and it will turn into an arrow. And we can then just drag it to take the padding completely out of the section. Right, let's have a look at what we've got so far. So I'm going to click on Save and I'm going to click to exit the Visual Builder. Now, when you create a, a global header like this, um, it will automatically replace the uh, standard WordPress header. So when I now go to uh, my front page, I've got my header and it's looking good. I've got my logo up here and I've got my menu on the right hand side. A couple of things I'd like to sort out. One, I would like to see a, a demarcation of some sort, some kind of line underneath the menu. I would like the menu to uh, stick to the top. It's not currently sticky. As you can see, it scrolls with the page. And I would also like uh, it to be a little bit wider to fit with the uh, actual design of this page. So let's fix those few things. So again, I'm going to click on Enable Visual Builder. And in the uh, latest versions of Divi, you now don't need to go through the Theme Builder to edit a page. You can simply click on Edit Header Template. And once I'm in here, I'm going to uh, sort out the width first. So if we go to the row, design settings and sizing, currently what we've got is 80% uh, width, but the max width, this is what's constraining us at the moment, is set to 1366 pixels. So that's the size that I've currently got set for the content area. I'm actually going to increase that. And I'm going to go again with 80% because you can put percentage values in here and that is much more pleasing. So I think much better uh, in proportion to the rest of this very open design for the page. So that's one thing sorted out. Next thing I want to do is make it stick to the top. And in order to do that, I'm going to go into the section. I'm going to come across to advanced and scroll effects. And I'm going to choose stick to top. And that's it. I'm not going to adjust any other settings and I'm going to click save. So I've now got a menu that sticks to the top of the screen. Now, without any kind of line underneath it, um, it looks a bit odd because with a white background, there's nothing really to uh, demark the menu from the page. So let's fix that as well. So I'm going to come into the section again. I'm going to go to design and I'm going to go to box shadow rather than border. Could do this with a bottom border, but I'm going to use box shadow and I'm going to set a box shadow underneath my menu. Uh, it's a little bit strong as it is, so I'm going to come into the color and I'm going to reduce the opacity of it. So it's only just showing up, but it is uh, demarking my menu from the rest of the page. So I'm happy with that. That looks fantastic. And the next thing we need to do is to, uh, I think, reduce this space a little bit more. And also what I'd like to happen is for this to shrink on scroll. Uh, and once we've done that, we can then look at how we style this call to action button. So let's deal with the uh, stickiness and the shrink on scroll. So I'm going to go into my row settings again. I'm going to come into design and into spacing. And you'll see now that because I've actually uh, set this to be a sticky header, I've got the little sticky icon here, um, which allows me to set a different value for the padding for the sticky option to the desktop option. So if I click on that little pin, you can see I have two options, the normal option and the sticky option. So what I'm going to do for the normal option, I think I would like to see a 1% padding uh, top and bottom. So you can click on the little link in the middle here to make it bottom as well. So yeah, quite happy with that. And for the sticky version, I'd like that to be smaller. So I'm actually going to have uh, no padding at all for the sticky version. So there we are. So what we've now got, nice little menu and it shrinks on scroll. 
I think also what I'll do is make the text get a little bit smaller on scroll as well. So to do that, I come into the menu settings. I go to design and menu text. And again, if I come down to the size options down here, you can see that I will find a sticky option in my menu. And I'm going to choose that and that will allow me to set a sticky size for the text. So if we go on to sticky, um, how small do we want that to be? Let's come down to, say, 16 pixels. Uh, that looks good for the sticky option. Excellent. So I think that looks good. So the last thing left to do is to style our button. And we don't do that here. We do that in the customizer. So I'm going to save all of the changes. I'm going to come out of the Visual Builder, have a quick review of where we are. So we've got a nice menu. It shrinks on scroll. Everything's looking exactly how I want it to, except, as I say, we need to do the styling on this breakdown help CTA module. And to do that, we're going to need to paste in a little bit of custom CSS. Now, all of that, well, all of that, there's only a few lines of it you will find in the description for this video. So we'll go into the customizer, we'll go into additional CSS, and we will paste in a little bit of CSS. And you can see immediately this is now turned into a button. It's not the right color at the moment, so we need to go in and fix that. Just to run through this, I've gone with background color and there's a, a hash code here. So let's actually fix that first. So to do that, I've got a little color inspector here and I can inspect the colors on the page because I want to choose this um, theme color. So that's EA3900. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to pop that in here as my button color. There we are, much better. I've set a border radius. You can have them all the same if you want. I quite like this sort of lozenge shape button. So I've set my border radius to eight pixels and 20 pixels, um, which I think looks good. Padding next, I've set to 20 pixels and 20 pixels. I'm actually going to change that because what I want to do is as the um, font shrinks down, I want the padding to shrink down as well. At the moment, you'll notice the padding doesn't actually change when the font shrinks. And that's because it's it's given in an exact or an absolute pixel measurement. So if I change this instead to 1M, well, let's go slightly bigger, 1.2M it would be. Um, and I'm also going to change uh, the vertical and horizontal values to 1.2M. So that's fixed that. But now when I scroll, you'll see that the uh, padding actually shrinks as well as everything else. So it shrinks in proportion to the text size. So that's great. Um, one more thing uh, we need to fix is we need to make this text a different color because at the moment uh, it's not very easy to read. And again, that's just a very simple one line of CSS. We can come in here and we can go color and white. And I know from previous experience that, that, that there will be issues with the responsive sizes. Uh, in order to stop that, I need to add an important tag to this. So I'm going to add important. Now that we've done that, let's have a look at the responsive sizes. So if we have a look at the tablet and we click on the menu, we can see that our breakdown help button is at the bottom of our menu, which looks pretty good. We come to the phone size, our button is also at the bottom of the menu here. Uh, so all of that looks brilliant. So once we're happy with all of that, we can click on Publish. We can come out of the customizer and we've finished creating our menu with our call to action button in the top bar. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Thank you.